Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be making one of my favorite dishes and that is, brace yourself, funeral potatoes. I know it sounds kind of kind of creepy, but funeral potatoes are my all-time favorite. You might refer to them as potatoes au gratin. I don't know, but <laughs> these potatoes are really good. Lucy, Lucy, I have Lucy with me today because her mama just had a baby. If you've been following my channel, you'll know that our daughter Julie had a baby about a month ago. And uh, every once in a while, I'll bring Lucy here to my house to t watch her for, so her mom has a chance to have a little break. Um, anyway, we're going to make these potatoes for Julie. And we're gonna, what's really nice about them is I can make them today. I can put them in the refrigerator and they are, and I don't cook them. I put them all together, put them in the refrigerator, and then tomorrow I'll take them to Julie and she can put them in her oven for 45 minutes and then they'll be done. The recipe is in the Griffiths cookbook and I will show you right now where it's at. And I will just quickly show it to you if you want to write it down. We, they're au, au gratin potato, officially known in Utah as funeral potatoes. Let me show you the ingredients that you'll need. The, um, you can go with a 30 ounce bag of frozen shredded hash browns. You can use the cube, but I think the shredded does better. And you can do that, or if you want to have, use some baked potatoes and shred them up, that works perfectly fine. And you would need about, let me look here, six. You need about six potatoes and um, cook them ahead of time and shred them up, which is really, that makes a really good dish. But for convenience, this is good. You'll need a cup of sour cream, a 10 ounce can of cream of chicken soup, an onion sauteed in a half a cup of butter, salt and pepper, about a cup of cheese, and I, I even like to add more. I like to put a little mozzarella cheese on the top. And then just before you cook it, don't do this before, don't do this and put it in the refrigerator. Do this just before you cook it. You add a cup or so of crunt, crushed cornflakes. So what I will do first is saute an onion. Do you remember me talking to you about cutting an onion so you don't cry? I score it around this blossom end, take the peeling off, and for some reason, if I leave this on here, it really helps me not to cry. I don't know why. No tears. Look at she's left it. Does work that far to the store? Now, you're gonna to want to use a bowl that's big enough that you can mix things up in. And then I'm just gonna dump this bag of shredded hash browns in here. And again, like I say, you can use your own potato, but you want to pre-cook it, bake it, and then shred it. And then the recipe calls for a cup of sour cream and I'm telling you you do not have to be exact on this recipe it's just a guide and then I'm going to add a can of cream of chicken and you can use cream of celery cream of mushroom 
and this is a 10 and a half ounce can. I don't know if the camera was going. I just added a cup of shredded cheese. Hey, you cute little thing. Now I'm just gonna salt and pepper this really good. And we'll probably pepper it again when we get it in the casserole dish. I like a lot of pepper. needs salt as well. Just going to add these onions and butter. Now it does not hurt at all if you think it's a little bit dry to add just a drop or two of milk. If you want a little gooier potato. Now that's nice. Want a drink? This is an eight by 10 casserole dish. You can put it in a cake pan, whatever. Now the recipe doesn't call for more cheese, but I'm gonna add a big handful of mozzarella cheese across the top because I think it's pretty and it's gooey. And then I'm going to place it in the refrigerator, cover it, and tomorrow when I take it to Julie to have her cook it, I'll have a little baggie of crushed corn flakes that she can sprinkle over the top. But if you put the corn flakes on now, they'll just be soggy and they'll never be nice and crisp. Lucy, do you want to say hello to everybody? <laughs> say hello, everybody. Hello. You want to show me your doll? Okay, show me your doll. <laughs> you cute little doll. <laughs> I hurried and made up another bowl of this so Chad and I could have some here at the house. And I wanted to tell you, tomorrow when I take this to Julie, I'm going to take her a whole ham. Well, not a whole ham. I'm going to take her like a half a ham. There's a fly in the house. There's a fly in the house. And anyway, um, <laughs> but I'm not going to get to do a ham for Chad and I. We have some leftover uh, cubed ham in the fridge, and I'm going to add that to here. This is good to put ham in it's good to have bacon or if you've got a little bit of bacon you can sprinkle up across the top uh, just there's a lot of different varieties to this if you want to try it i imagine even some sausage would be good in it <laughs> just put about three handfuls of crushed cornflakes on here. This is gonna go in the oven at 350 degrees for 45 minutes. Oh, 
Does it still have ham in it? Yeah, okay. yeah. That one's Perfect. got little chunks of ham. Yeah. Yeah. Is it hot? Yeah, it's pretty hot. Mm. Warm. <laughs> Very, very good. These are always one of my favorite ways to have potatoes, and that's fino potatoes. Interesting name for them. They taste <laughs> really good at the fino or at home.